Rag Dolly Anna, how do you do? Rag Dolly Anna, good day to you. What will you be doing today? Upstairs, downstairs, on your way. Rag Dolly Anna, just like you. She knows that one and one may two. She can talk all this and that with a bunch of paper roses in a big store hat. With a bunch of paper roses in a big straw hat. Rag Dolly Anna lives on the first, second, third floor of a block of flats with the little dressmaker, the dressmaker's dummy, and white cat. Early one morning, the little dressmaker was looking at the calendar. Do you know, today is the first day of spring. They're 21st of March. Rag Dolly Anna looked at the picture on the calendar. It showed a pretty woodland scene with a path running through it. One side of the path was covered with primroses. I don't care for primroses myself, commented White Cat. No use at all. The little dressmaker stared out of the window. But where would we find primroses living as we do three floors up? Oh, apply your mind to the problem. Decide what to do and do it, said White Cat, drawing himself up to his full height. He suggested a plan. Care to bath, page 179 in the timetable. Of course. That bus goes straight to Thornhill, and we're sure to find some primroses there. I know. We'll leave everything and go today. Now, hurry along, Rag Dolly Anna. Straighten your hat and fetch your shawl. The little dressmaker told Dummy where they were going and when they were coming back. She put some cakes into a large tin and turned to Rag Dolly Anna. There. Now, when we've eaten them, we can put the primroses in here. In no time at all, they were sitting in the bus and driving out of town into the countryside. White Cat sat in front so that he could give instructions to the driver. They left the bus at Thornhill Farm. While they were deciding in which direction to go, White Cat made off towards the cow sheds to visit his cousin, Professor Perkins, and to find some fresh farm milk. The little dressmaker had to carry Rag Dolly Anna most of the way, as the cart track was so muddy. They came to a pond with ducks swimming on it. The little dressmaker looked around for somewhere to rest. Oh, look! Here's a nice sheltered corner with a log for a seat. Now, why don't we sit down here to eat our cakes, and then I can have 40 winks and you can look at the ducks. Rag Dolly Anna watched the ducks floating on the surface. Then she thought, I wonder if the cake tin would float. Gently, she pushed it into the water. It does. It floats. Oh, it's like having a boat of my own, she thought. Soon she tired of pushing it about at the edge of the pond. Very carefully, she tried putting one foot in the tin. Then she put two feet in. Before she knew where she was, she was floating. The tin went round and round and out and out. Help! Help! cried Rag Dolly Anna. And the little dressmaker, who was hardly asleep, opened her eyes at once. Come back! Come back at once! It's deep there in the middle and dangerous! But Rag Dolly Anna couldn't come back. The cake tin was only just floating. One splosh of water had plopped over the edge and into the tin already. She felt it cold and wet around her feet. At that moment, White Cat and Professor Perkins, deep in conversation, passed by on their way to the dairy. Professor Perkins took one look at Rag Dolly Anna in the middle of the pond, and then he turned to White Cat. And I say, quick, young chap, to business. 
there's a pole in those bushes and it's long enough to reach her. He turned to the little dressmaker. And the madam, if I could ask your assistance. The two cats disappeared, taking the little dressmaker with them. When they came back, the little dressmaker was carrying the pole. Held on tight to the end, shouted White Cat to Ragdolliana as the little dressmaker swung the pole towards her. Ragdolliana reached up and grasped the pole firmly with both hands. Then, with her foot on the edge of the tin, she managed to clamber onto it. At that moment, another gulp of water plopped over the edge of the tin and it sank. Stand on the pole and walk your way to the bank, advised Professor Perkins. But Ragdolliana knew she would fall off if she stood up. After all, I'm not a cat. I've only got two legs and I haven't got a tail to help me balance. Pull, shouted White Cat to the little dressmaker. She pulled and pulled and pulled. Ragdolliana was quite near the bank now. It's a funny thing, she thought. When anything nice is happening, time goes by as quick as a wink. And when anything dreadful is happening, every minute lasts half an hour. At last, she was safely back with her friends. What she needs is common sense, said Professor Perkins in his deep, throaty voice. It isn't wise to go sailing in a cake tin. A duck pond is for ducks, and ducks are for roasting. The little dressmaker turned to him. I'm grateful to you for your help. <laughs> Only too pleased to oblige, he replied. Then he and White Cat walked off towards the dairy. Ugh. <sighs> <sighs> Now, why don't you jump up and down? That'll warm you up a bit. Ragdolliana jumped up and down, up and down as many times as she could. Now, do you feel dry enough to gather some primroses? Oh, yes, thank you, said Ragdolliana. But what shall we put them in? We'll never be able to get the cake tin out of the pond. The little dressmaker had a think. I know. We'll put them in your hat. We'll get a great many primroses in there and won't it look pretty? Magdaliana took off her hat. It made a really good basket. Under the hedge were lots of primroses. Magdaliana admired their delicate yellow faces and the smell. She sniffed slowly. Ooh. The hedge itself was full of things she hadn't noticed before. It had looked so dead from a distance, but now she could see the leaf buds beginning to burst with new growth. Then she saw a nest. It had four tiny bright blue eggs in it. The little dressmaker told her what it was. No, that's a hedge sparrow's nest. They're almost the same size as the cheeky house sparrow at home, but they're not related. It didn't take long before Ragdolliana's hat was piled high with primroses. The little dressmaker looked at her watch. Oh, my goodness. It's almost time now for the bus to take us home. When they arrived at the bus stop, White Cat and Professor Perkins were already there. It's been jolly good to have a break from the hustle and bustle of town, said White Cat. You must stay with us when you're next up. I wonder if he will, thought Ragdolliana. When they got home, they put the primroses in a jam jar and put it on the windowsill next to Dummy. She seemed pleased because she moved her mouth just a fraction as if to say, I like them. Ragdolliana's fine and brown Standing up and sitting down Ragdolliana's fine and fat With a bunch of paper roses in a big straw hat